component selection for the helicopter is pretty important as well. Um, this one you can kind of choose to fit your own liking a little bit more. Um, here we have a flybard mechanical mix model, um, and so we'll talk about some things for flybard and mechanical mix helicopters, and we'll talk about some components for flybarless helicopters as well. Uh, first, we'll start off with the mechanical mix flybar model. Um, you only need a tail gyro and a governor. Uh, if you're flying nitro, if you're flying electric, then, then you can use the internal governor on the speed control or um, just throttle curves. You can actually just use throttle curves too for nitro, that's fine. Um, but nowadays, usually like the 701 or some of the other gyros and even some receivers from different manufacturers have governors built in. So it's silly not to use it if it's built in. Um, here you'll see we have the gyro box here and the gyro sensor back here. Um, some gyros are all in one with wires coming out and some have like this, like the 701 has a wire that leads back to the sensor. Um, the biggest thing is, and we'll cover this in helicopter setup as well, um, but you want to mount the sensor in a location that vibration can't get to it. So if you're flying nitro helicopters or helicopters with a possible chance of high vibration, it's best to choose a gyro that is separate from its main gyro box. Um, underneath that we have the receiver. Um, as long as you have enough channels to do what you need to do and plug in all your servos, any channel receiver is fine. Um, usually helicopters, nitro helicopters like this, uh, including a governor, usually take up to about seven channels. Um, electrics, about six, depending on governor and all that other stuff too. Um, so we're kind of going to touch on a couple of the different setup points of a mechanical mix model now. Since they have one servo to operate every operation, so we have one servo for ailerons, one servo for elevator, and one servo for the collective, it's not that important to have the same servo for all the functions. So one of the biggest questions is, if I can only afford one good servo, where should I put that? And my personal answer is, number one, the tear rotor. You want the tear rotor to have the best servo, the smoothest servo, with the highest speed, because that'll let your gyro work a little bit better. Uh, the next is the collective. Uh, specifically on a model like this, where there's only one servo controlling the collective, you want the most torque there. Uh, the aileron and the elevator next, the biggest thing with these is you want them to be matched. Um, if you have a faster or a more torquey aileron servo than the elevator, uh, you'll start to feel kind of one lagging or feel almost like a little bit of an interaction when you're going through maneuvers or inputs, or it could just feel more sensitive. Um, the throttle is your least important, but you want it to be really reliable and you want it to have decent speed to keep up with whatever the collective servo you're using. Uh, to talk a little bit about CCPM helicopters, um, that actually has three servos operating the swash plate at three different points, and so all three servos work in unison to operate your swash plate. Um, so the biggest thing with CCPM models is you want to definitely have the same three servos for your cyclic. Um, whether or not they're high grade servos, um, I would say about the same as, as a mechanical mix model. As long as they're matched in speed and decent torque to operate the swash plate, you'll be fine. Um, for fly barless systems, uh, it's best to have a little bit faster servos. Uh, just like a tail gyro, it lets the gyro respond a little faster and your helicopter becomes more stable. Uh, on the collective, I do have a little bit better servo. Um, uh, let me see the number here. Fataba 9452. Uh, and that's a digital servo as well. On the tear rotor servo, we have an ACE digital tear rotor servo. Battery, uh, I tend to prefer Life or Direct LiPo. Uh, $300 HV servos, that kind of stuff. You don't need that to make it work. Uh, you can see in this model, I have 1807 ACE RC servos. Um, the biggest thing is to monitor the voltage and accurately get a regulator or a battery pack that is the, ba is the voltage for the servos that you have. Engine selection is pretty important um, because you want a reliable and smooth running engine. Um, the main reason you want smooth is because any vibrations through the helicopter, they're all gonna go straight to your gyro. Um, with an electric, of course, that's not that big of a deal. Um, with the electric, you want to try to match your flight time and the power that you need by using different head speed calculators and power calculators and that kind of things that you can download. I know Castle has one. Um, a few different places on the internet you can use those. Um, the biggest thing there is to find batteries that you're comfortable with using and match your speed control and motor to the batteries and the gear ratio of the helicopter. Um, the recommended gear ratio and stuff like that is usually fine in, in the helicopters that they come with. Um, back to nitro, um, you want to choose a reliable engine because obviously while you're learning, uh, you might not be able to do auto rotations yet. And so if 
the motor dies, well, that could cause a crash. Um, so the best thing is to choose a, an engine that you can monitor and get parts for easily and choose a pipe that is well combined with the engine. And a lot of the different companies like OS have their own OS pipe. Uh, for example, this is an OS 50, so I've paired it with an OS 50 pipe. Um, the same thing with their 90s. Uh, YS has Hattori pipes, and Hattori also makes pipes for OS and several different brands, Funtech. Um, all the options out there basically these days run. Um, so the best thing is to get the right pipe for your recommended engine. Blade selection is pretty much all personal preference. Uh, most of the blades out there work fine. Um, if you're wanting to do aerobatics in 3D, uh, you always want a symmetrical rotor blade. Uh, it'll just feel silly if it'll feel real weird going inverted and climbing out if you don't have uh, symmetrical blades. Um, for the guys that are wanting to do scale, sport flying, things like that, uh, semi-symmetrical blades are fine and they will give you a little bit more stability. Um, here we've got V-blades um, on this helicopter. These are 600 millimeter V-blades. The nice thing about V-blades and one way to choose blades, if you're going to be doing aggressive 3D, it's fairly important to get a stiff rotor blade. Uh, you'll notice just how stiff these blades are. These are actually the stiffest blades on the market right now. Um, but you want to choose something that's stiff because if they flex a lot in flight under load, specifically as you're learning new maneuvers, everybody gets a little happy on the, the collective pitch and you could possibly bloom strike your helicopter. Um, also, some of that is in your rotor head setup, so make sure to match your rotor blades with your flying style. Um, if you're doing sport flying, actually you want to look for softer blades because they will, more, they will be inherently more stable for you. And you can also turn them at a slower RPM so you get longer flight time, etc. Rotor blade length is a pretty commonly asked question as well. Um, the only thing that really the length matters, as long as you're using the recommended length for the helicopter, some helicopters have different rotor heads, like you can see for a 50, this is a fairly short rotor head. Um, where the G4 over here has a fairly wide rotor head for its size helicopter. So on the G4, we wouldn't inherently want to use the longest recommended blade, um, unless you're trying to do long flight times or wanting some really good collective authority. Um, the shorter blades will tend to give you a little bit faster rotational rate but they won't give you the collective authority and they won't auto-rotate as well. The longer rotor blades might slow your cyclic feel down just a little bit, but they're going to auto-rotate a little bit better and your collective authority will be dramatically increased. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, if you're flying glow, electric, this isn't that big a deal anymore. Um, if you're flying glow, you want to make sure that the, ro that the motor can handle your rotor blades. If you're running too stiff or too long a rotor blades, your motor could bog, which could Add, do weird things to the helicopter and make you think that something else is wrong, but actually it might just be your motor's bogging.